Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome everyone. This project video, I've been ordering some bits and pieces from Procraft in the UK. Uh, link will be below in the description for their website. And they do lots of different kit items that you can buy, all very, very reasonable prices. And I know that there are quite a few turners who actually buy kit from them, so they are a very reliable source. For this video, I'm gonna concentrate on bottle openers. This one is one of the classes, their large one. It's antique gold. It's a covering on there by the looks of it. So I don't know how long that will last, but it will be interesting to see. The way the instructions or guide they give on their website to do is this thread on here is about 10 and a half mil. So you want a 10 mil hole for that to go in. And their guide on there is to then turn or drill another hole to put this flange inside so that it's partly inside the handle. Whether I go that way or not, I'm not sure. I will deal with that as I go along. And because it's antique gold, I thought, well, what better wood than probably go for maybe a piece of oak. Uh, oak is classed as old, and I may even then use my brine wax dark oak on it to make it look like even an age, more aged piece. The second bottle open I've got is what they call their heavy duty one. This one's in chrome. The interesting thing on this one though is that again, it's a threaded point piece on here. Uh, but when you look at these very closely, what you'll find is that you've got an eight and a half mil thread on here, but the sides on here have actually been flattened off a bit. This thread length is about 30 mil. So there's an awful lot of screw into your piece of wood. The last one I've got here is what they call a disc bottle opener. And this is one that you, it's 36 mil wide. You basically have a hole in the end of your blank so that's not big enough anyway but the idea is you'll put a 36 mil hole in the end here for that to sit in it's got to be a little bit of a depth in there because you've got the screws to go on the top as well and when you do that one you will also need a secondary hole inside for where this sort of like three prong shape goes inside so that when you put your bottle cap in it's got somewhere for the bottle cap to go into now the piece of oak i've just cut down to probably just about 150 mil long and the first job is just to get this trued up and i'm going to put a 30 mil tenon on one end Now I'm going to follow the sort of like the guide they put on the Procraft website to make these. So I've got a 20 mil forcing a bit in here to start with, which is what I want to do is sink this in. And as I said, we've got a 10 and a half mil thread there, so we'll need a 10 mil hole. The thing you need to make sure as well is that you get this thread hole right, first of all, because if you start screwing this in, the chances are you're not going to get it out again because this is actually screwed onto another bolt inside. So it's better to make sure that you go a lot deeper for this than is required with your 10 mil hole. Now my force and a bit hole for the 20 mil hole, I've gone in there 12 mil. So I know I can lose about seven mil off the end here and it should then sit in there nicely. The 10 mil hole I've done in there about 40 mil deep, so it's more than deep enough to, for this to go into. My next job now is to just shape the handle and I'm going to use sort of more or less the, my hand as a guide for the sides that I want this. I've sanded this with 180 and 240 
and just sand it along the grain as well just to take any extra scratch marks out and i took the end down here as small as i dare that's probably about two to three millimeter and i'm just going to give this a coat of sanding sealer and then i will give it yorkshire grit and then a wax finish that I've just used the Yorkshire grit on and it's come up really really nice now as I said for the finish I'm using the Bry wax this is the dark oak I always prefer to use a piece of wire wool to put this on uh, it just runs into the grain a lot better and at the same time gives that sort of sanding effect because you're using a, a very very mild abrasive and I'll try and rub this in well because you don't want this in big clogs. You don't need much pressure and with the bry wax you don't need much speed either. So I'll just put the lathe on here, running at 550. And I'm just going to use general pressure and hope you can already see the shine coming through there. Just want to buff it up. Now all I've done is given this two coats in the end and it's come up really really nice and dark. Now if you find that this does get a little bit dull you can just use ordinary clean piece of kitchen towel or a cloth and you can just give it a buff up like that. And there we go and I can just gently sand that off in a few minutes and probably just give it a touch of polish on the end there and hopefully this will screw in I mean, even with oak <coughs> that's screwing in quite nicely there's no way that's going to fall out there so the next one i'm doing here is the what they call the heavy duty one whereas this one's the large this end plate unlike this one you don't sink inside with an additional hole so it goes flat against you, the end of your piece of work that, like that. So I've got a piece of beach here, 32mm square, 152mm long. So I'm going to just true up this end a bit just to get a tenon on there properly so I can then turn it around in the jaws. And then I will then true it up and I will get the hole drilled in the end. And then once I've got that I can then start doing all the shaping that I want. I may, since this is just beach, may colour this one. Uh, so I may get out the airbrush with the wood dyes that I've been doing in recent videos. I've sanded this down to 600 now and I've decided to use the airbrush here. I've gone for a yellow first and I'm probably going to go through literally all my colours and I'm, this is the big stencil I didn't use when I did the uh, Christmas ornaments and I don't want to have this as too much a sharper shape so I'll probably hold this away from the work a little bit. Uh, it might change as I go along. And I'm just really looking for something that's not really a straight line. Try something like that.
it's not really coming much the curve so i may well have to just alter where i go on the stencil so next color up is the bright red Just try and cover up the right remaining white here. Uh, for what I'm going to do to finish off. Uh, I'm going to use a bit of black just on the base here. I think what I might in actual fact do is just try and mask the bottom in a little bit with a bit of black. similar to the top pause I'm just going to use is the gold nine web which is the equivalent to about a thousand grit and the good thing is because these are dyes they soak into the wood what I'm going to do now is just give that a coat of the chestnut cellular sand and sealer So I'm going to do something now which you normally never ever do when you do colouring. I'm going to give this a go with the Yorkshire Grit. And the reason you don't normally do that is because it's an abrasive. It's got wax in it. You certainly don't put it on before you do colouring because the wax will stop the colour from going in. But this is a dye, even though it's water-based, so it might get the colours running a bit. Uh, but it's had a couple of coats of sanding sealer. So it might have more of a blending effect or it might well just not because the sanding sealer is on it might not have any effect whatsoever i suppose now is the moment of truth to see what it's done and i can still see some nice bright colors there and it's had if anything very very little effect on the whole piece and I've just got a really, really nice smooth finish. Everything still looks well cut off. So there's no reason you can't use Yorkshire grit over the top of these. Give this a coat of wood wax 22 and then a coat of microcrystalline wax. Okay, so I'll just get that sanded up. I will patch that probably in with a little bit of black uh, but that is now finished and it should hopefully just screw on here now the good thing about this is if you don't like the colors don't like the handle don't like the shape you can just unscrew it and put something else on so it's not glued on just sanded the end off there just colored a bit a bit of sanding sealer and just hand put on some woodwax 22 on there just to blend it all in a little bit better so it looks more of a finished piece now now the last one i've got is the disc style of bottle opener this one is just about 36 mil wide uh, just a tad under 
and you then need a secondary hole inside just inside around about this, the distance of these which is around about 25 mil now you don't want to get it too wide because otherwise the screw holes are not going to be on any wood i've got a piece of walnut here which is a piece left over from when i did the salt and pepper grinders and i've got a nasty big old knot in the top here which i'm hoping doesn't affect too much but it's possibly that signs of a knot there so it may well start to diminish in size as i go through so i'm just going to turn this down a little bit to see what it's like to see if this is going to be suitable or not got no tenon on this it's just mounted in the chuck which is why i've got the tail stock up so i'm going to take as i say take this down a bit to see what that knot is like further inside and then i will then if that's okay face the bottom off here do the recess to put the disc in and then do the secondary hole to go inside this Hopefully you can see there now that's where the knot is it's not too deep in there so hopefully as i say it's not structural uh, because i left this as quite a chunk on here the inside there is all finished off just going to put this on the jaws here fairly gently just enough to hold it in place and bring up the tail stock So that's now all off the lathe, all finished up. But to fit this on, I mean, I don't know how well that shows in the camera, the screw holes are just about bordering this inner hole here. So I'm going to do a pilot hole. I mean, these screws are really, really tiny. And they're about a two millimeter screw. Um, but because they're not very long, I'm going to do a one millimeter hole. Just try and get this. So I've just angled the holes a little bit. So that the screw goes slightly away from the wall. So three bottle openers I've done there. The first one was this heavy duty one, uh, which is in antique gold. And I just thought the oak handle with the bry wax, colored wax in it really suited it. So it looks like an old fashioned item. The good thing about this one, as I gave an example of, obviously the, the recess hole in the end here. So that this end goes into a sleeve 
so that there's no edges on there. Now the cost of that kit, I think is something like about £3.95 for that. So they're actually quite cheap. It's not a bad price at all. Now the second one I did, I went for a coloured one. This is classed as the heavy duty bottle opener. It's in a chrome that I've chosen here. The price for that I think is about £3.80. So again, very, very reasonable. And went for a totally different style of handle decided on the color it's a little bit bright something a bit different just to have a play around with the airbrush with the last one i did this is the ring type one and the good thing about this is that you can really make some nice nifty little shapes so that looks like some form of a bell nobody would ever realize that that's a bottle opener the only thing you've got to do with this though is that because you've got your leverage point there you want you need some form of length on here so that you can you've got that leverage to open your bottle with those screws seem very very small so you need to make sure that you've got some good holes for them to screw into don't drill your holes too big uh, because they, if they haven't got the hold in there they will rip out over time price on that is only two pound 20. i mean where can you go wrong with that so three bottle openers made fairly quick and easy projects they're as complicated as you want to and the style and shape that you do is entirely up to yourself so you don't have to go for anything like that thanks a lot for watching